Senator, thank you very much for your time here in London. I wonder what your thoughts are today on one particular Aussie, and that being Liesl Jones. She's received a lot of attention uh, and criticism with regards to her physical appearance at the moment. You spoke out recently about discrimination in sports, so I'm interested in your view. Well, I think this is a, a case of, of, uh, of an appalling uh, attack on, on her physique. I think Liesl Jones is deserving of far more respect. She's earned her way to these games. This is her fourth Olympics, and I think it's quite appalling that she's been um, you know, presented in this way in the media. It's wrong, it's unfair, it shouldn't have happened and I think, I think she's owed an apology. You'd like to see one from... Look, I, look, I, I think that's fair. Um, she, she has the right to be focused on the event that she has before her. Uh, she has uh, earned her way to these Olympics. She's an extraordinary person uh, that has achieved great success and worthy of our celebration and our acknowledgement in that regard. So I think it's a a really unfortunate incident. You've been dealing with issues in sport today, I understand, at a meeting of Commonwealth ministers here in London. Tell me about the issues that uh, you've been having to deal with and how do you find common ground? Uh, Look, it was a a wonderful meeting. It was a meeting of Commonwealth sports ministers chaired uh, by the UK sports minister Um, These meetings happen around Olympic Games and Commonwealth Games and it was a great opportunity to reaffirm uh, the Commonwealth's commitment to sport as a platform for social development and social inclusion. We were able to take a a, a paper to that meeting that focused on um, match fixing and in, in protecting the integrity of sport. With the Olympics always comes attention on the medal tally. Uh, I think uh, the prediction for Australia is 12 gold, which would be down a couple from Beijing tally of 14 gold. I read that there's some $170 million spent on Australia's elite athletes. Are you ready if the medal tally drops to step in and give more money? Or what do you, what do, you do at that point? One, one of the things that Australia is best at with regard to sport is innovating. We did that with the advent of the Australian Institute of Sport um, years ago now and continually, like, for example, with our green and gold funding, we're able to focus our investment leading up to this Olympics on our athletes that were coming fourth and fifth, so helping them you know, move up the ladder. But for us, the, the inspiration provided by our elite athletes and the winning of medals is part of a continuum, if you like, it inspires the next generation of young Australians to take up sport or, in, well, in, in my case, take up a new sport as an adult as a result of, of being inspired by the Olympics. So it, it is a full continuum and that investment can be, um, uh, you know, I think, directly associated with improving our participation base and reaping the wonderful dividends that come with um, kids, people generally leading an active life that involves regular sport. Do you think, though, you would give more money if we see this tally uh, drop? Because it has been on a steady decline since that remarkable achievement in Sydney. Uh, well, it's, I think what's happening is not that we're not spending enough, but other nations have, have looked at, towards Australia and take inspiration, taken inspiration from us and developed um, their own methodologies and investments. I think the challenge for us... Is, is not just to throw more money at it, although obviously that's always part of you know, the conversation, but to keep it innovating, to be smarter about how we, you know, we gear our uh, sports system to achieve great results. You've got a lot riding on the medal tally, though. I understand there's Certainly a bit of a have. bet with uh, the British sports minister, Hugh Robertson. Uh, look, we, we do have our traditional wager on the... In fact, it's a gold medal outcome, and it really depends who you talk to about how many gold medals. I saw a, um, a Sports Illustrated uh, assessment that had us um, chasing 16 down, which was an improvement on even the AOC's uh, forecast of 15 gold medals. So somewhere on that spectrum, um, Great Britain were about the same on some of the predictions. So you just never know. Um, I think it's a, a live bet... Um, We'll be really interested to see how we go with that. But, of course, if, 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 if Australia wins, uh, then uh, Minister Robertson will be donning a kookaburras, a hockey shirt, his hockey stick and ball, and, and taking it around the outside of Australia House here in the centre of London. 
Um, and if Great Britain win more gold medals, then I'll be I'll be out there in my um, Stella Mac uh, Union Jack T-shirt, rowing the length of the Eton Dorney rowing course, the Olympic course out there. So uh, we both play sport. He's a hockey player. I row. Uh, we thought this was a good idea. So we'll see what happens. Has there been an agreement when this would take place? Um, well. W- w- the logistics of that are quite challenging. It might end up being um, you've just got to before get back. the yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I'm coming back for the Paralympics, so it might end up being just on the eve of the Paralympics. We'll have to work out the logistics. But I'm not. I'm not in too much of a hurry to plan ahead for a, uh, another trip out to Eton Dorney because you never know. It just might go the other way. Here's hoping. I know our athletes are quite comfortable with that underdog status. It makes them that work hard. It's something all Australians are comfortable with. So we're here to win, to do our level best, and uh, and hopefully we'll get the result. Senator Kate Lundy, thanks very much for speaking to us on Sky News. Thank you.